finish her. So while you sitting over here having fake fraudulent relationships with your, your ex, your kids ain't even happy about it. You sitting up here sitting like a darn fraud, bringing a different man onto the reunion every freaking year. I hope he's sitting behind you this year, Ooh. Pastor Holy Whore. Ooh. Since you want to keep calling my husband Big Boy. But is Jamal coming? Y'all don't know what time it is. I got the black bean neck on. Fatality, Monique wins. Real Housewives of Potomac just delivered a season reunion like no other. This will go down as one of the most infamous reunions ever. I have got to give it to y'all. Real Housewives of Potomac is coming and has came for Real Housewives of Atlanta's wig, girl. And they might be sponsored by Karen. Come on, LeBron Dom. But, girl, we have got to talk about this Potomac reunion. I am shook up to my core. I was not expecting this. Everybody said that this reunion was going to be it. And I'm just like, is it? But judging from what we got, I was blown the hell the entire away. Like, girl, we have got to talk about it. So let's go ahead and get into it. So before we even get started, you know, they're doing a little intro stuff and showing everybody getting their face beat and everybody's getting ready. Um, we've already talked about the outfits. I loved some outfits, some outfits I hated. I didn't like Ashley's outfit. I didn't like um, Wendy's outfit that much. I love Monique's outfit. I love Karen's outfit. Um, I think, you know, Robin did a decent job, but her wig was a fool. I don't know if she was trying to do a little Kim situation with the little, you know, the spray Fendi stuff or logo stuff on the wig, but it just wasn't, it was very confusing. I don't know if she was about to be Cheetah Woman in the Wonder Woman on 1984 movie or not, but I was just very confused about that. Giselle, always the worst dress, like Karen said, that's on brand for her. Um, but moving on with the outfits, we get into Karen. Karen has really been, Karen has done the most change throughout this this seasons. Like Carrie has has had the most growth. And you can tell that it's finances inspiring her growth. Um, you know, Karen did talk about, you know, her experience with losing her parents changed her, but I don't think that was the main thing. I think the main thing was finances. We've seen Karen. Karen, girl, we know you had more than just a, a than the butt nose added or whatever. Um Girl, call you Rudolph because your ass is over there lying. Girl, um, let's play reindeer games if you want to, Karen. But like, I scream when Robin said, is that the old thing, the last thing you have done? But we all know Karen has some work done. And whoever is, you know, doing Karen's face, we need to know. We need to know because they should be, like, getting paid, okay? Because it, it looks good. As far as growth, I think Karen and Ashley have changed the most. Ashley talks about, um, you know, her outfits and stuff. She's a little bit more conservative. Um, because this is Dean's body and this new baby's body. I cringed a little bit with that. I, I don't know why I cringed at that, but I was like, eh, that's still your body at the end of the day, but I understand where she's trying to get. I'm going to let y'all talk about that, but tell me how you felt about that. I was like a little cringy with that. Uh, but Ashley and Karen have changed the most. I feel like Candace has done a little bit, but Candace has, you know, gradually become more comfortable. I definitely agree that Candace has became more comfortable with the group. Now, we get into fashions. And they drag Giselle by her green eyes. <laughs> Girl, I screamed when somebody had called her some boomer food. I had to <laughs> holler. But um, Giselle is the worst dress. Dre she has the worst fashion sense ever. Now, look, for somebody who is like the king of graphic tees um, and a couple of cute shirt, button up shirts, I'm not good with fashion. I ain't the one. I just, for me, I don't believe in spending all that money on no clothes like that. If I can't take it to the pawn shop, I don't want it. Like, I'm one of the folks. If, can I take it to the pawn shop and things get hard? Then I buy it. But some clothes, I buy it every once in a while. But you ain't finna have Justin, this, 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 that. I ain't doing all of that. But if I was someone like, you know, Giselle on a show like this, every once in a while I would serve up some fashions. Her fashions just have always been terrible. They've just not been good at all. Um, and Wendy saying that she has pretty girl syndrome, she doesn't have to do that much. I'm like, uh, Wendy, as degreed as you are, I would expect you to give us a little bit better definition of what Giselle, why Giselle is like that. Um, I'm very keen on the word desirability, thanks to my fr friend Deshaun. I think that Giselle being a light-skinned woman with green eyes and you know, these Eurocentric um, beauty st um, standards that she fits, I think Giselle does not have to do as much. Like, she can be the worst dressed and, and still be okay. It's like a laughing thing. But had she been anybody else, if it was Wendy the worst dress, 
Um, you would be able to tell the tone. And we're going to get into the colorism conversation because they talked about it. I was a little bit disappointed when I shared on Instagram about colorism. People kept bringing up Candace and, and what she said about the hood rat stuff. And I just, for the life of me, could not understand because I never did say what Can that Candace, what she said, was right. But Wendy dealing with what she was dealing with was right and um, Monique was wrong for interrupting her. I cannot wait to talk about that. Let's go back to the fake Fendi. Baby, when they showed her in their fake Fendi and it was Indy, I hollered. That was a good response <laughs> to Karen Dragon and, you know, talking about Giselle's fashion because... Karen, we don't, Brom Dog, we ain't believing that they had to edit, you know, and, and, and whatever, alter the outfit to fit you. you the, the way the F was going, there was no F at all, girl. You not, that was not Fendi. That, and if you are going to wear something that has the name of the brand that you are wearing, you are not telling me you're not making sure that the name of the brand, that's the whole thing that y'all do. Because y'all can say, this is Fendi. So for the F to be, whoever styled that and did that for you, they they failed you, honey. They really failed you. At the least, you're going to make sure they had the capital F on there. But I guess the capital F was left off because it's there for you failing that outfit. But that had me screaming. We get to Wendy and her degrees and all of that. And honestly... She did rub me the wrong way a couple of times with the constantly talking about her degrees and this and that. And I'm not Igbo. I'm not Nigerian. I, I, I don't know. I, I want to be careful with this conversation. Because she talked about this a cultural thing. We are a proud people. I definitely believe that. But I think some of y'all from conversations that I've had with a lot of people, and a lot of folks who spoke on that, there is a lot of anti-blackness that comes with that. Like how y'all... Like, be talking about things, and, and it's like y'all are very prideful of being accepted in white spaces, which are ultimately anti-black, very anti-black. So I think when you say it's a culture thing, I don't think it's a culture thing. I really feel like that it's white supremacy and it has us warped of thinking that you cannot be a person unless you do have a degree, unless you are a model citizen. Like, that is the anti-blackness. You have to be, you are a citizen, you are a person. First, no matter if you are working as a doctor or you're working a janitor or whatever, but the world we live in, our value as a human being is what we can contribute to capitalism. Like, it's nothing wrong with Wendy having four degrees. I think it's a beautiful thing. And don't get me wrong. Wendy, talking about her degrees, I feel like she does use it as a defense mechanism because everybody else is on the show bragging. The whole premise of y'all on this show is to talk about how much money y'all spend. Y'all are housewives. Y'all don't work any jobs, traditional jobs. You take care of home. You take care of, like, you well off. Ain't no regular housewife coming on this show. My mama ain't making no hundred some thousand dollars a year or a million dollars a year. Like, she not going to be on the show. The housewives that I know, the folks who are working wives and, and whatever, they are not going to be on Real Housewives of Potomac. The whole premise of this show is for y'all to let like, y'all live an extra lifestyle and y'all let us know all the time how much money. Oh, this house right here was worth two million and this and that. So Wendy coming in with a different experience and say, not only do I have coin, but I have degrees too. And none of these other women have that. None of these other women. So I'm very, I'm questioning. Karen's motive of why she wanted Wendy to be kicked off. Like, she doesn't fit. I feel like it was a little bit, it was borderline xenophobic a little bit to me. I'm just going to have to be honest. It was giving me, like, you, she didn't fit in. Like, this is the only African woman on this show, this Nigerian. We've never had anybody like Wendy on any of these shows besides OG. And we cannot, we cannot act as if this stuff happens in a vacuum. The way OG was treated on um, whatever that show is, basketball wise, to how Wendy is being treated on this show. Like you can see it, there is this, 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 this conversation, it's like this elephant in the room of colorism and of xenophobia that, and featureism that nobody wants to talk about. Like everybody on this show is lighter skinned. I like Monique sometimes. Monique doesn't really speak for dark skinned women. She is a light brown woman. If I had to like the darkest person on the show is Wendy. Candace to me is not dark skinned. She's brown. Like 
she is dark skinned. Like if we talk about all of them, Wendy is dark skinned. She has experienced colorism. Like I don't understand how folks are out here saying, wow, why, why, why has it always got to be a colorism? Why has it got to be about race? Because we live in this world that is racist. That is, you can't escape it. No matter what you try to do, you can stick your head in the sand, you can, but I guarantee you, somebody gonna tell you, pull your head out the sand, depending on what they see in your, what color your legs is. Like, girl, you can't be, you need to be doing something. I don't like this, I don't like the phrase of, this has nothing to do with race. Everything has something to do with race. Everything! You can try to be positive all of you want. You can feel like, oh, no, girl, I don't have those experiences. But these are the facts. No opinion, just facts. She definitely experienced colorism. And I love that Wendy explained how those words affect her after they were said. There is a, like, when y'all say aggressive for someone, like, we just had this whole conversation about OG being called aggressive. We just had this whole conversation about OG like two years ago. Like, when was it? Was it, it wasn't last year? Yeah, it was a year ago. I have plenty of videos and talking about OG and what she experienced on Basketball Wise. The blatant colorism. The blatant, like, she's experienced the same thing. And I'm not, I'm not really not getting how folks are not seeing that. Yes, it is wrong for Candace to be saying hood rap and all these other things. Candace is anti-black too. Candace says vile stuff all the, all the time. And when people come in and say, well, what about what Candace said? Reverse colorism is not a thing. Candace being a, a like she a, like she's not like she's not light skinned. She's not dark skinned to me. She's like brown, which is like basically like, to be honest. But like what Candace says was ugly. It was ugly. She should not be calling Monique, but Monique and, 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 and Candace are about the same complexion. So, like, it's like y'all, it's like it's just trying to reverse colorism and stuff, and it doesn't happen like that. Like, even if Wendy was to call, uh, make jokes about both of them being light skinned and light skinned, reverse colorism is a thing. Yes, it is wrong, but you have to be able to point words to where they matter. Words matter. Words matter. Come on, Crystals. Words mean things. Her saying and making jokes is wrong, but it's not colorism. Colorism doesn't go back and forward. Oppression doesn't go up and, and, and back and forward. I don't know how many times we have to have this conversation, but I will to the death of me, that it doesn't happen like that. Me calling a white person out of their name and saying other stuff and calling them white walkers is not racism. There, I, don't, I don't have any way to oppress white people. A dark-skinned woman cannot oppress a light-skinned woman. It's not happening every day. It's not. When you look at the female rap, what's going on, Majority of all the female rappers who are mainstream are lighter skin. There is no reverse colorism. We have to accept that. We cannot move on to other conversations about other systematic stuff without being able to say, yes, colorism is a thing, at the very least. So that's why. So I had no problem. I love that Wendy got into that. I feel like it needs to be a deeper conversation because we keep missing it. It's only three or four minutes. And nobody really has the range to have those conversations. And it doesn't. He's a white gay man. He doesn't understand. Monique's talking about something. Everything ain't about race or color, all that. She gets called, and you should not be. But at the end of the day, Monique, you fit Eurocentric beauty standards. Wendy got a big black nose. She's a dark skinned black woman. She's the darkest one on the cast. And she has a Nigerian heritage. Like she is from Africa. Like she is like she had it. She's still wearing the clothes. She's still embodying the culture. She's gonna experience different stuff, not only from her being darker, but her also being a Nigerian woman. And you. So you cannot, I just did not like the fact, really did not like the fact that Monique was cutting her off. Like I really did not like Wendy is explaining her reason and she was articulating really good. She was saying that these words mean things. You have to be careful as a dog whistle. And Ashley, with her, her mama, I'm, pretty, I'm not, I thought her mama was white, by the way, she was talking. Ashley has no idea. Ashley has no idea. She does not have the range for this conversation. As intelligent as Ashley claims to be, she does not understand colorism, and that's okay. But sometimes it's a time to sit back and listen and pay attention. Monique should have did the same thing. She didn't understand that she was out here talking. And sometimes Monique, she just don't be getting it. She's about some that it's about your actions. Wendy being called aggressive will stick on her way more than it will stick on a Giselle 
or even a Robin. It will not stick on them the same as it will Wendy. That's just what it is. That's just, it's the same thing as a, like a white person calling uh, a white man aggressive versus calling a black man aggressive. You can, a white man probably the job can say boy to a white boy, hey come here boy, versus being told to a black person, a black man. The, hist the history behind it, like, like that's not, that's not playing dumb. Like, like that's, that's like pretend like none of this stuff happens. Like we see it, we experience it, we know it. Like come on y'all, we can do better than that. Um, so, like, I love that she talked about that. Girl, I'm going to remind y'all again, I love Wendy, but Wendy her, it wants to be accepted in these white spaces. The John Hopkins University. New white folks don't give a damn about your ass. And the fact that you keep talking about, you know, all these accolades and degrees, you still sitting on the show with a whole bunch of women who've been fighting and, and arguing and doing all this mess and getting paid probably the least. So, what do these accolades actually mean when you are in a space like this? It's just like, yeah, it's really, really cute, but it's like, I laughed when somebody said, Wendy talking about all these degrees, but she'd be on Fox News at 5 o'clock in the morning. I literally screamed because it is true. Um, and then you out here talking to these white folks who don't give a damn about none of that shit you're talking about and don't give a damn that you work at the Hopkins University. Like these white spaces don't give a damn about no black folks like sis. They don't give a damn how many degrees your ass got. Please kill this black joy, the um, black excellence bullshit of you fitting, you fitting in white spaces and being accepted by white folks as black excellence. It's not black excellence. It's want to be black ass supremacy, and it'll never be a thing. Moving on to the next thing, I do agree with how Karen Karen does want folks to gravitate to her. I think that was so. I'm kind of. You know, go back. Uh, I know I said something about that there might be a little bit xenophobic or stuff. Like, I, I can take it as that. I can feel like that is. But it also could be that, sh that the way Karen, the way Wendy responded to um, Karen made Karen like, girl, I'm the grand dame. I'm the, I'm, I'm the girl. Like, you need to be coming here and bowing down to me. And the fact that you don't, that you know that you don't fit in. Um, it's just like, girl, y'all be doing all this shit. Y'all be talking in all these white ass spaces. These white folks don't want y'all to hear. They don't want y'all ass in D.C. They don't want y'all in Baltimore. They don't want y'all anywhere in their spaces. So y'all be kidding me like, this is, this, we, don't, we don't do stuff like this in Potomac. What Potomac? Girl, y'all great, 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 grand roach was a slave. Please, please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Now, there was some shade. I want to say, who in the hell made a com comment and said that, um, uh, whatever that baby name is, um, Ash the baby looked like um, <laughs> his daddy. Who said that? Y'all, it's wrong. Um, yeah, um, Candace and that hood rat stuff was I already talked about. That was not here for that. I don't, I don't agree. Like, and I don't agree with Candace at all. Candace was wrong for a lot of stuff she be saying. She be really, and the fact that Andy made a comment about she's a disaster on Twitter, I completely agree with my guy. Shout out to family you. Um. You received that message from Andy. The reason why Andy said that is because Andy is letting you know, sis, that you keep on, this might be hurting your chances of being on the show. Because Candace did make a negative comment about a blogger wish death on him, and that man died like a month later. Not saying that her putting the energy out killed him, but it's just like words mean things, and for you to say something like that, and then this person died, it just, it just doesn't look good. It just doesn't look good. Now, I'm one of the folks, like, I don't mind folks talking about me after my death, and I don't mind folks talking, I don't mind talking about people, but the way Candy was vile and she was being fat phobic while dis dis describing this blogger, like, Candace, you're on a higher level, you're on a TV show, this man is on Instagram or whatever, like, yes, it is wrong for him to be saying that, especially as a man, he should not have been saying some of those things about you, but you responding and saying stuff like that, y'all both in the same boat, so, like, and you on the show, and you can lose out on more opportunities than he would have. Um, so that's my thing. Girl, the dragon, Giselle's house, call it the, uh, the Ronald McDonald house. Not only can Giselle not dress, she don't even know how to, what's her name. Like, Giselle trying to explain why her products and stuff ain't out, why her website, website ain't working, doesn't make any sense to me. Your website should still be working, even if the product is not there. Like, you just didn't have the money. You just didn't have the money with Giselle. The stuff costs a lot of money to make sure you got stuff. You talking about some old girl, the reason why, um, you know, the companies are not moving stuff and all this. Like, girl, Giselle, y'all filmed this reunion episode, like, y'all filmed this reunion last, y'all were filming it around the time that Kamala, um, walked out with the white outfit. 
So this was last month. So everybody else is working and getting stuff done. So I'm not understanding. You just ain't got the money. You don't want to spend it. Just be honest. Like I love the Grom Don said that. Grom Don said, "Girl, this, you've been liquidated. Just say that. Just say things and be honest." So they get into the question about Jamal Bryant, which we all been want to know, and I've been saying it. Like I wanted to honestly come out and make a video and drag the hell out of Giselle for her putting her children through that. Them three girls, they don't like their daddy like that, and it's okay for them not to like their daddy. They can respect him. You know, or whatever, in, in, in their own way, but they don't like their daddy. And the fact that Giselle keeps pushing them on them is questionable. And I honestly have a word for it, but I'm not going to say it over here because I've already had a conversation with my friends about it. Like, she keeps pushing that man on them. Like, they don't like, like their daddy. They already said we don't like what he did to you. Like, why would you do that? So we know that Giselle is only with Jamal Bryant for a storyline, which is why Homegirl came out with the binder and started dragging. So, they asked Giselle, have you been seeing Jamal Bryant? Have you been hanging out with Jamal Bryant? She said she hasn't been referenced with COVID. Girl, you were just at Cynthia's wedding for 10, 10, 20. So make it make sense for me, 2020, my vision. Girl, we are confusion. What's going on? So you have been reckless with COVID because you've been walking around with a damn clear ass visor on your head like you're going to go to a tennis match. Like, girl, go sit down. Um, just really confused with that. Girl, they really get into Jamal Bryant. And homegirl, Monique comes with the bond of full of women. Girls would have put Mitt Romney to shame. Sis was asking questions and had the receipts. Like, are y'all in a real relationship? Because the text messages I'm seeing with the phone number 410 double double o called Mike Jones, she asking, like, girl, this girl said that she texted your man and he texted her back with this phone number. That is Jamal. You said it's this number. Yeah, it's the number. And Jamal texting her and saying, no, none of this stuff is true. We ain't, we ain't doing nothing. And then the girl I'm dumb is asking and saying, girl, I'm getting the tea that, you know, y'all have made an arrangement and said that y'all going to work it out and whatever for the show. It's believable. Y'all not telling me that this girl is not in love with Jamal Bryant. She needs the storyline. She most definitely probably needed Jamal Bryant to save her on the show. But you know what? Some people will argue and say, it's not really Giselle's fault. She can't be responsible for what her man was doing. She can't be out here responsible for her man out here having six, seven baby mamas and all that because the conversation came up. Does he have a new baby? Would you stay when he do have no baby? She said he doesn't. The other team saying that the lot of the test determining that's a lie. So what's going on? Because Jamal Bryan is slinging his sausage everywhere else. So what's the tea? Um, and some folks say that's wrong. Like she should not have to answer for her husband's stuff. But Giselle has brought up conversations about other wise men being in infidelity. So it's just like, now we get to talk about you and Jamal Bryant. And now you're on Compton, now you want to talk about it. She said she ain't seen Jamal that much because he's been traveling doing all the kind of stuff. We know the reason why. I don't think she's in love with that man. She's not in a relationship. I think he did come to save the show. Jamal Bryant is not trying to smash on Giselle like that. Jamal Bryant like sex and he probably smashing everybody in that congregation honestly new birth has a history of folks who are passed on at, at that church who've been trash so and doing some really underhand stuff so um girl monique ate you alive monique ate you alive for three minutes and when i tell you i hollered Monique A show at you didn't have nothing to say and you can tell that you were uncomfortable because everything Monique was saying was true and I'm screaming that Candace trying to over talk Monique and Monique just ignoring her and still talking like Monique like I'm glad like Candace you talking about who's listening to this we listening to it we want to hear it we are interested in it girl we don't care about your mama giving you a, a plant for your house we care about Monique dragging the everlasting dog out of Giselle with this whole situation and we saw it like live. Monique was going in. Baby, this will go down as one of the most epic reads. Like call it what you want, say it is wrong, but Monique came prepared and if you're going to talk mess, you got to bring receipts. And Mon Monique did that. She had the receipts, she had the screenshot for the conversation and she ate Giselle up. And Giselle ass was on mute. Like, girl, she, I screamed when Karen asked the question and said, is Jamal coming? <laughs> Baby! Giselle was getting A up. 
blah, blah, blah. She was getting A up, and I was like, you know the read is deadly. When people know that you are wrong, and you get read down, and people feel bad for you. That's how you know the read, the read is epic. But I don't think Monique, personally to me, I don't think Monique was wrong. I think Monique did what had to be done. You out here talking about me, I'm going to talk about you. And she ate her ass alive. And I hollered. I hollered. I cannot wait to part two. Like, normally part one of the reunion never get that good. But this reunion was good from the beginning to the ending. Y'all really did that. Shout out to Truly Original. Y'all did this. Like, girl, it was everything. Like, I loved it. I was engaged. Monique, girl, I bow to you. Because, girl, that was some good reading. Like, she said she had a body. And when you look at the binder and zoom in she got everybody named in there and she has Giselle named as last lady <laughs> girl that's all I got for this reunion recap tell me what's your favorite moment besides Monique getting <laughs> Giselle together let me know in the comments and until next time I'll talk y'all later on tonight bye